call him, ladies and gentlemen, one more time while he's getting in the chair here. Five more, more exciting. times. Six more times. Six. All right. Well, that's no. that, does that one count? That or sure. does the? I didn't know I was the headliner. Yeah, man, this is it. Final guest of the day. We're closing it down. This Battle is, of the bands. That's right, man. We got the fog machine going out going on for a you. some kind of note. It's a note. It's a note. You want to say hi, note? No. We're going out on a note. There we go. Oh, that was a. That's that was a, somewhere. It's like an F sharp. That was a F minus. I think. F minus. All right, we're grading it now, guys. Um, one more time. No, I'm kidding. I'm so excited you're here, Matt. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, man. Uh, I can't tell you the amount of hours me and my friends kind of uh, boiled away just watching all the stuff that you guys produce. It's a really cool deal to have you here with me. So thank you for joining us. And we congrats. figure, thank you. We figure if we waste time making it, you should waste time watching it. For perfect. That's it's like a symbiotic like relationship in that way. We're all in this together. So, so how many years ago did you guys? How long have you guys been around now, man? What's 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 the count on this at this point? Two hundred. Uh, we're actually years. vampires. I had not revealed that until this interview. We got the That's exclusive. Breaking news. Guys, start tweeting uh, that immediately. Matt Hullum, walking, vampire. Walking the earth for a long time, you know, in this corporeal vessel. Uh, no, uh, yeah, 2003 is when we started. Jeez. and um, but, but we had been kind of like, you know, trying to figure out how to do something online, how to put video out online for several years before that. And I was living in L.A. and Bernie mm -hmm. was living in Austin. And uh, he made a video with a, a couple of guys at that are now at Rooster Teeth, and I happened to see it in L.A., and I called them, and I was like, this was like 2001 before there was yeah. YouTube or anything, and I was like, man, I saw this video, it was so funny, uh, you must have had a hand in that, and he's like, yeah, but I just, I just posted it six hours ago, and we were both like, what? You can Because that was a video? big deal back then, because it was like, what, real player or quick time? Nothing, or yeah, that, like yeah. you had to download stuff and like, you know, watch it off your desktop, and when we first started Rooster Teeth in 2003, like, half of our website was just answering the question, how do I watch video online? You know, because there was no, no in, answer. Yeah. yeah, there was no in browser player. And then the second, you know, part of the website was just talking about all of our crazy vampire habits. No, that didn't. <laughs> um, but so it was like, you know, uh, we, we, we started off with Red versus Blue. That was our first big series. And um, by the third one, it was being downloaded a million times a week. Yeah. But crazy. back then it was like a million downloads. You didn't actually know how many views that was because. Not that many people had internet connections fast enough to download. So yeah. people would download and they would burn it on CDs and they'd pass it around at school or somewhere else. And um, that was like a big way that we got discovered back in the, you know, back in the day. Yeah. It was like people passing around red versus blue on homemade burned CDs. Yeah, it's actually it was one of the ways that we first discovered it. My buddy Austin had shared a CD with us. He was like, you got to check this out because we were huge Halo guys. It was like the next level VHS. Yeah, all. exactly. <laughs> Uh, VHS are those uh, black rectangular yeah. things that your parents have stacked. Okay. That was the Fair next enough. level eight track. Uh, <laughs> no? No. I told you I've been alive for 200 years. <laughs> We're going yeah, back Yeah, some of these time. references are dated. That's of right. Um, but what I want to know is what, what led you guys into, how did you land at Halo as the, the means through which to tell these stories and kind of dick around? <laughs> like what, well, what, what ended up getting you there? We were we were just playing a lot of Halo. <laughs> we played a lot of Halo. I mean, we were playing Halo all the time, and um, I always liked the fact that we took you know Halo like any video game where it's like the purpose is to 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 not be productive in a way. I mean, it's the you know playing video games is like the time you relax and hang out, and um, and then we we took it and, and did something productive with it, which you is like in, yeah. that's against the rules, right? But that was what was really fun about um, Red versus Blue and just everything that we were doing on, online in general had this feeling of like um, we were we were trying new things that maybe were were something that anybody could do because they they genuinely were new things that almost anybody could do like you know we just made like our first you know mini videos with uh, you know an Xbox and some kind of like home recording equipment that we yeah. had so it wasn't it wasn't like a, a technical masterpiece it just had a lot of love and a lot of energy and enthusiasm we were really excited about the space and we were really excited about um, making content that we didn't feel like existed anywhere. Yeah. And, uh, and we're still excited about that. We feel like that's the, that's the thing that we've tried to keep at Rooster Teeth for the last 13 years, you know. Even though uh, there's, it's a, the world's a lot different place, Rooster Teeth is a lot different than it used to be. It has a lot more shows, a lot more people. Uh, but, like, I think our, our core kind of, like, aesthetic is still the same, and what we're still really interested in, in is the same. And we like stuff that where you, you know, look at things from, like, a slightly different angle instead of, 
maybe playing multiplayer all day, you right. turn it into m mini movies. Well, that was kind of the fun of it at the time for us when we got hooked on it was because it was this very familiar area uh, doing something that we hadn't thought someone would do with it. And also the voice, and I mean this in the best way possible, it felt like, oh, our friends did it. Like it was yeah. a very relatable voice at that time. We yeah, like, and, oh. and so many, like the, fir like the first uh, six episodes, it was only going to be like six episodes Yeah. originally. Real quick, and how many do you guys have now? 13 eight, eight bazillion. Eight I, don't, bazillion. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I so I actually don't know the number of episodes. Yeah, it was hard for me to find somebody a final online. Number I'm sure is, is is tweeting at me right now. You would think that, but in my research, it was hard to come to like a. It's, there's so many that there's, I couldn't find like a count. There are so many, and there's some that we've put out that are like. There's many episodes. This is not a real episode. Yeah, exactly, don't count yeah. this as an episode, um, which you should count as an episode. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there's um, but yeah, we've made so many uh, seasons and in, in episodes of, of Red versus Blue now. But the original half dozen. The idea was really just like these are funny conversations that yeah. that we you know we have as as friends, you know like does this vehicle look like a big cat, you know, <laughs> exactly. and things like that that Chupa that thingy. Just, yeah exactly uh, that turned into uh, you know the the show and it was really about looking at the this universe in a different way. When uh, when you guys were what was the process like back then when you guys were putting this show together w was there just set up some mics, improv, some nonsense. Did you guys sit down and write it out? Because there's a line in particular I want to ask you in a yeah. second, but I want to find out exactly what, what you did going into it. How well, seriously did you take it, I guess, is the question. Well, right? we took it really, we took it seriously in the sense that we were really, we really wanted it to be really good. We were really excited about what it was, but we didn't take it seriously in the sense that, you know, we didn't show up to 9 a.m. at work yeah. <laughs> every day, you know, and, and, and punch a, a time card or, or anything. And when we first started, all of us had, day jobs you know mm -hmm. we all had other jobs I was working in LA uh, Joel was working in LA and uh, Jeff and Gus and Bernie um, were, were in Austin and we were all doing different things and like trying to get it done at, at, at night um, but it was it, I was reminded of it recently because we just like our animation group uh, which is now almost 100 people Wow. yeah work in our animation like just our animation department and they we recently uh, we moved them to uh, a newer, nicer, bigger building down the street, mm -hmm. and it's like it's by far the coolest, nicest place we've ever had, ever had is Rooster Teeth, and um, it's got this really cool uh, recording booth, and it's like super professional and everything. And I went and then I was like, I was just thinking back like 13 and a half, 14 years ago, our recording booth was the the closet in Bernie's spare bedroom, and it had one of those shoots. It was on the second floor. It had one of those right. shoots that goes down to the laundry room. Okay. So you couldn't always record your dialogue because occasionally if somebody was doing laundry, you, you would just hear the k -tunk, k -tunk, k -tunk <laughs> of the laundry down below. And so you had to stop. But it was also <laughs> like, and if you did a really bad job and you wanted to escape Bernie's wrath, you could jump in you the laundry room. You could, in theory, jump down there. To escape. That was the escape hatch. Right. Which, being vampires, would yield no damage. You'd it would be fine. No, yeah. uh, totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, well, the, the line I wanted to ask you guys about is when you guys started off early on in the game, it wasn't originally Rooster Teeth. You guys were uh, Drunk Gamers, right? Drunk, yeah, so Drunk Gamers was another website that primarily Gus and Jeff ran. Right. And so that was kind of like uh, a place where uh, we were dabbling in um, like goofy internet content. And then, um, you know, there was this, like the other group, like the LA group, I, I guess you would call with me mm -hmm. and Joel, and Bernie kind of brought everybody together. And so once we officially started and started actually making videos, it became Rooster Teeth. And the origin of the Rooster Teeth name is from, I forget which episode it is, but it's early on where Simmons. It's uh, actually from the, the trailer. It's from the trailer, so it's not even which, in the show. Well, it is in the show, but like, like the original it, source of it. Um, and you, you, you said even though your mom is watching this, right? No, she's totally, can, yes. Curse. You can, so, yeah, you can curse. I, so, we're Italian. You so, can hear it. Thanksgiving, it so was So the insult, cockbite? Yeah, cockbite. No, it precisely. The, it, the, it comes from the insult, cockbite. And the big... Well, go on. Tell your story, because well, I have a question about it. But yeah. it was, you know, uh, we thought that was a really funny, clever thing to say. And it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was an insult that was in this trailer we made. The trailer actually came out before, um, like, the show started airing, like, before our official start date, which is our birthday is April 1st, 2003. Yeah. Um, and so the trailer is older than that, but it was... There's in the, in this trailer it seems serious and there's like both a narrator and subtitle some titles happening and the guy writing the subtitles and the narrator start arguing with each other yeah, yeah. and uh, one of them calls the other a cockbite. Did you? Guys and we couldn't. We thought maybe maybe we can't register cock 
Cockbite Productions <laughs> with the state of Texas. It was already taken. It's probably what the issue probably, was. Yeah, probably it was probably so. already some kind of a yeah. product. No, but, but you see, you guys went for Rooster Teeth. Yeah, no. at the finest poultry dental firm <laughs> in the world. We were on Google, like Google Maps for a long time. It was like, as like it said both poultry and dental office. <laughs> that's pretty. Well, that's a hell of a combination. User, user generated. There was a place at a, at a local mall. I remember as a kid that was like dental and podiatry, and I was like, that's a really weird combination. That's not. That's like, not good. I hope those are two separate chairs, right? Like that's not yeah. one room. Or you know which which end you're working on. Exactly. I th that anyway, cause problems. It's like a very parenthetical practice, right? It's like the yeah. top and the bottom, nothing nope. in between. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, so I wanted, I guess the big question was, did you guys ad-lib cockfight, or was that like something you sat down and wrote, you're like, nah, it's not going to work, take that out, that's not a good one for it, we need another insult in there. Um, you know, was there a writer's room Bernie, I'm pretty sure Bernie wrote and voiced that entire thing by yeah. himself, so if he ad-libbed it, he probably, ad you know, it would have been, he was writing or ad-libbing would have been the same thing, but Bernie always has come up with funny insults, especially when I'm standing in the way of the insults. <laughs> So I like to think I take credit for it just by being, you know, the vector by which he tries out many insults. I think that's a perfect thing to do. And plus, no one here is going to tell you you didn't do it. So I think at this point you did it, right? That's how the sure, Internet work. works. Exactly. There we go. That's now right. It's a fact. We that's right. Um, <laughs> we just had uh, last week uh, the dudes that started Smosh were here, and they were really cool. And your name came up. Uh, yeah, they've been in Red versus Blue. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah so uh, cool we were talking a little bit. You guys, uh, the Smosh guys, I said even like uh, like Chris Hardwick and the Nerdist thing are all a bunch of people that have been in this game for a while and have sort of endured. And there's like been tons of people creating content on the internet, but there's, and you're all doing your own thing, you're all doing different things, but what do you think it is that 13 years later, you guys are here, and I didn't get to say this earlier, but Red versus Blue, and this blew my mind, longest running web series, very cool of all yeah. time, but longest running American sci-fi series, and if it wasn't for Doctor Who, it would be longest ever. Damn that Doctor Who. I know, right? There's nothing you can what do. Is He's going to win every time. It's well, it's just Who. like, it's o Doctor Who's only 50 years old. So right. we have time to catch up. You can do it. You can, he could stop at some point. They're I, gonna mean, I shouldn't even suggest such a thing, but it could happen, and then you guys can close that gap. Fumble around with whoever their lead actor is and, you know, <laughs> What do you thrills. think? I, but my question from all of that is, what... What, what have you guys done? Or was there an active strategy just to endure? and stay, what, what sets you apart? What do you think you've done that has gotten you here 13 years later and you see all these other people that have kind of not been able to figure it out? What's the secret? Just being terrified of going back to your day job, I think, right. helps, you know. Uh, that and our, our vampire blood, which powers everything that we do. Boy, we've beaten that joke into oh, yeah. the ground. I don't right? know if we can bring up that. <laughs> it's not even a callback anymore. No, it's, it's a safety not. net. It yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, I mean, for us, it's like, it w you know, we, we always wanted to make content and just um, deliver it directly to people. Like, we just thought of, like, making stuff for our friends was fun, and then our friends turned into a community and, you know, turned into a bigger and bigger audience. And yeah. Um, and so I don't know. I think we've just never lost the appreciation for what it was like when you couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, when it, I mean, because I think now there, it's it's you know every, anybody can upload anything, and there's so many hours that are uploaded. What is it like 400 hours? I think are uploaded to YouTube every single minute. Yeah, it's intense. Um, so so in in some ways, I think it's harder to have an appreciation for how amazing it is be, to be able to, you know. Uh, ha have something cool that you've made and, and send it out into the world. You know, it's like that's a really special thing that's that's only happened in the last you know 10, 15 years. Yeah. Um, and so we're we're just appreciative of that and thankful of it. And we have a lot of stories that we want to tell. And um, we've thankfully been able to, as we've grown, get to telling some of those bigger stories. Like we did this really cool uh, uh, apocalyptic drama series called Day Five this past year. It was the first time we'd ever done an hour-long drama an apocalyptic story, and it was, it was really exciting. That was something we'd want to do for a long time. And yeah, it I looks incredible. I haven't it, had a chance to check it out yet, but I was looking because it's on the, it, you guys have a new app, right? And you could watch it. We do, it. yeah, yeah. So we have uh, now Xbox app, an Apple TV app, um, more apps coming. Very, and, very cool. You know, and you lots can watch of cool ways Day to watch 5 on team. there, right? You can binge watch Day 5 to your heart's content and Crunch Time and Ruby and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Was Day 5, was that sort of uh, the, the first type of project, like the first project in that style that Rooster Teeth had taken on? That sort of... Uh, day, day 5? Yeah. Yeah, in terms of it being like an, an hour-long drum. It, it yeah. was. I mean, like, Crunch Time is a really cool uh, uh, half-hour sci-fi comedy series, mm -hmm. and it's got some really cool kind of like more dramatic 
uh, storylines, and it's kind of a real 80s vibe if you're interested in, like, Stranger Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's got some of that like, kind of, like, throwback nostalgia feeling. Um, and so we're doing more longer form, more premium stuff uh, just at Rooster Teeth in general. Our docs have been really big with our audience, mm -hmm. um, uh, exploring kind of, like, uh, subjects that we find really cool that we don't feel like other people are covering. You know, uh, we did one that was called the world's greatest head massage. There was about this, yeah. the viral, this guy's a viral sensation in India that mm -hmm. gives people these crazy head massages. And it's part of the entire like um, ASMR, you know, uh, phenomenon basically right. that's going on. We went to India and explored that and ASMR in general and um, just lots of cool stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that we've always just like really enjoyed um, finding new ways of telling stories, different types of content. Uh, we've got a, a really cool sequel of sorts uh, to a show we call, did called Ten Little Roosters. Okay. The sequel is going to be called, get this, Eleven Little Roosters. You weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> exactly. I was literally on the edge of my seat. I, I, you were, yeah. and I like that I, you committed yeah. <laughs> whole, with your entire body to do that. Um, but, it was, uh, but that's a really cool. Like, it's a murder mystery, and it's interactive, and it's like one of those things you, I think you can only tell of like online and with a community like Rooster Teeth's community, it's going to be like so hungry and engaged to find all the clues and you know lots of cool stuff like that. Well, that's it's funny that you mentioned, and that sounds really really cool. But I think just going back for a second to the question of like what has helped you guys endure is this incredible community that's sort of surrounded the Rooster Teeth family, or that is the Rooster Teeth family, really. Like it, yeah, it is. And I mean, when one of the first events we ever, had, I always love coming to New York. It's one of the first events we ever had uh, after we finished season one of Red versus Blue. They invited us to play at the Lincoln Center. Mm -hmm. And we were like, first of all, you got the wrong people, you know? <laughs> like, that we're not, obviously, we shouldn't be there. But we, we thought, well, we, get, we have to do this as an amazing invitation. So we came out, and we thought, it'd be cool, maybe a few New Yorkers will, will come, and that would be nice. But we weren't expecting much. And people from all over the world came. Yeah. And we had literally had people from, like, Ireland and Australia and uh, Alaska and Singapore. I mean, li literally everywhere had come for this and like 500 seat theater and that's when we realized like like there really was a worldwide community and it was something bigger than just uh or a single show and a single you know moment like there were people that were hungry for like a new way of storytelling a new type of content a new way of getting it and a new like forum to to interact with each other and we just thought that was so amazing, especially seeing it in person and seeing all those people. Was it, when, when that reality set in of how big this, this, how global the community was, was there like a new sense of responsibility or like a, oh shit, let's not mess it up moment? Or like, well, they love what we're doing, there is nothing to mess up. Like, what was sort of the reaction to the realization that so many people yeah. were connecting with this stuff? I mean, both. I mean, it's like equal parts cheering and vomiting, <laughs> you know? Like, this is the best thing vomiting. that's ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, because it's super exciting. And and then it is kind of like an awesome uh, bit of responsibility. You feel like, you know, what, hey, we've, we've started this thing, and a lot of people are like, are kind of counting on this now, you know? And we got to we gotta keep it going, and we got to do the best job we can. And, you know, and everybody who was in, in you know, around in those days is, is still around and doing stuff at Rooster Teeth and still excited about it and um, and we love what we do and hopefully we'll you know keep doing it for a very very long time. Well I think in addition to the community supporting Rooster Teeth what's helped you guys endure is the the certainly no lack of stories to tell or ways to tell them I mean like you've got full-on animation you've got the, the 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 red versus blue style you've got the now an hour-long drama. You've got uh, a feature-length film you did, soon to be yep. two feature-length films. Am That's I right? right, yeah. We're going to go to audience Q&A in a second, but before I do, I wanted to ask you a little bit about La Laser Team 2. Can we talk about the film at all? Can yeah. We? So are they going to space? What's going on? We'll see. Can we see. not say that? We can't <laughs> say that part. Okay. I, I, can, uh, I, wanna, uh, yeah. I can tell you uh, uh, Bernie has done two drafts on the script, and they're okay. really funny, uh, really exciting. Uh, I, I don't think anybody is going to expect some of the, the directions that the story Very goes cool. in. Um, but it's, it's the same uh, group of knuckleheads on Crazy Adventures, and it's, uh, it's going to be a, a, a really fun time. And I'm looking forward to not shooting it in the winter <laughs> because we, the last, when we shot the first one, it was below freezing in Texas every single day, and we were outside like 60% of the time. So how often does that happen? I, don't, I haven't been to Texas, it, but I, I my knowledge. It was, I think it was the often. only time it's ever happened in the history of the world. 
What are the odds? Not, Nobody could the have odds? possibly predicted yeah, that. That's right. And how do you know don't even bother again? looking it up. I just said it so it's true. Where are you where are you shooting this time? Do you know yet? Texas. So how do you know it's not going to be freezing again? I don't. Yeah, there's no way to tell, is there? No. It happened once. It's yeah, I know. It could easily happen it's, again. I'm just I was trying to look on the bright side. Fair enough. No, and you should remain optimistic. Perhaps it'll yeah. just be tepid. Tepid. <laughs> I would love if my weather app, like you put up your weather app and you're like, what's the, oh, it's tepid today. Well, I feel like if you have very measured expectations, tepid. right, you know what I mean? Right. Don't hope for Don't a gorgeous day. Don't go too far in either it's direction. It's ridiculous. Yeah, That's just right. take like an okay day. Like, is, it, is, is it gorgeous, Siri? Is it No, it's tepid. It's Thank tepid. you, Siri. That's I'm all fine. I want. I'm fine with tepid. It's a perfect Wednesday. It's That's perfect. all I need. That's it's lovely. All right, so do we know when the, the it's two drafts? It's going to be. We're hoping so for we're, tepid. We're going to start. At least time, what thinking? We're going to start shooting. Uh, te tepidly, we're going to start <laughs> shooting uh, late spring. Okay. And, um, you know, we have had snowstorms in, in spring in Texas. Yeah, really? I hope that didn't happen. But uh, late spring, and then um, it'll be out before the end of 2017. Very exciting. Yes. Very, very exciting. Yes. Uh, we're going to open it up. Let's take some questions in the room. I see a microphone. I'm going to be brave. Are you the first one? Yep, that's me. <laughs> um, okay, so I have two sort of questions kind of linked together. What, what was your initial relationship with Bungie when Red vs. Blue started blowing up? Was it like, did they like try and hit you with a bunch of copyright infringements, or was it like these guys are pre it's pretty much brand awareness, and you know at the end of every year they send you a, like a Christmas basket or whatever? What was your relationship? And then second, uh, bleeding off of that, what's the last Halo you really like sunk your teeth into? I guess that's for both both of you. I think yeah. the last one I did was like Reach, and I like really put some man hours into it. I'm yeah. What about you? Um, gosh, so what the, the, the question, oh, I guess the people can hear him, he's got a microphone. Um, well, it was interesting because when we first started, we didn't, like, we weren't trying to make a, a business out of Red vs. Blue or Rooster Teeth or anything, and they contacted us, like, pretty much immediately and said, man, we love what you're doing. This is really funny and really fresh. And um, I think it's really, like, a testament to, like, Bungie and Microsoft and, like, everybody who was especially or like around at that time, but I think it still holds true today, uh, how forward-thinking they were. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't an atmosphere or a climate like it is now where there's just lots of this kind of stuff online and, and there were lots of, par lots of parodies now and just different things. And, um, you know, that's, I think that's why they asked me to play Master Chief. So I play Master Chief now. No, I don't. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I mean we're still huge. Um, Fans and I've played all of the uh, all of the games and one of, one of my favorite things now is that um, my my oldest son is old enough to play Halo so we play all the Halo games. I've done all the campaigns with all the co-op campaigns with him awesome. so which is really fun. Um, so is that a no to the giant gift basket from Bungie? Is what I'm assuming. We actually the... we send gift baskets and uh, and they have sent us gift baskets before. And um, so that is a nice very special thing. You guys yeah. Little gift basket exchange. They're they're truly sweet and wonderful people. Do they just take another basket and rearrange the things from the one that you sent? They and do. Send it back? It's like the candle. Yeah, it's like the candle. That was a the good candle. Bit. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, I was very proud. It took me a year of, of time over the weekends, but this past weekend, I just finally beat Halo Four. And so, yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> hold your applause. Hold your applause. Please, please, please. I, I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. But I did beat Halo 4 over the weekend. Uh, so I know five's out. I got to catch up. But thank you for asking and indulging. Uh, next question. <laughs> next question, please. Hey, Matt. Uh, so was it hard in the beginning to find uh, time or uh, find balance between doing a day job and, uh, and working on uh, something that you were, like, really passionate about? And uh, what was your day job? Yeah, it it really was hard, and that honestly can always continues to be a struggle finding you know balance stuff. I think when you work in uh, production, in general, um, you always try to use like every last second of the time you have to make something as good as you can, and you just get invested in something and and excited about it, and you, next thing you know, it's it's 3 a.m. right, and you've been working for for 48 hours straight, and um, uh, yeah, in the early days, um, I, I think Jeff and Bernie, did, you know, Jeff and Bernie did most of the animation, you know, machinima of season one, just the two of them. Mm -hmm. And I think videos came out, back, they came out on Fridays back then. And probably the two of them, like, never slept on Thursdays, like, for that year, because they would work on the episodes all night, and they would have to go to, to their day jobs at first thing in the morning. 
And um, I'm sure they both looked like they were hungover every time they came into work. They were video game hungover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for one more right over here. Hi. Uh, thanks for being here. So my question for you is, uh, seeing as you're at the forefront of, you know, viral videos and stuff like that, what's your favorite viral video to date? Favorite one to date, like ever? ever. That's hard. I li really like the guy punching the kangaroo the I other was, day. Oh my God, I was gonna bring that up. That yeah. is the best thing I've ever seen. I am, I, I'm against cruelty to animals, 100%. of course, and that's terrible, but kangaroos are freaking terrifying, man. Dude, they are so jacked. And if you've ever seen them in real life, I've been to Australia a few times, and they have the, the zoos where you can walk around, and it's like, hey, there's a dango, there's a wallaby, and there's a kangaroo over there. That's my Australian accent. That was a really good Australian accent. Thank that you. was fantastic. And that you applaud for. The Halo thing, no, but you this. applaud. Yeah, there you go. Wow. You guys are the best. All right, so you were saying you're... Well, but they're terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, uh, you know. Dude, that video I'm just really glad that guy didn't get, like, a kangaroo just, like, bam. Dude, the balls on that guy. Because he know. stood his ground. He took a swing and then waited for the kangaroo's response. <laughs> That's Who right. the hell does That's that? Right. That was the most Australian thing. That was really the best part. It's like, all right, mate, your turn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's see what you got. <laughs> like, now you go. It was crazy. And then I ended up, I'm sorry, one more thing on the kangaroo thing, and then we'll wrap this up. But I ended up on, like, this internet rabbit hole of just, like, juiced up kangaroo gifts. Yeah. Which is a crazy thing that you can get sucked into. It is absolutely terrifying. There, there are a lot but of But infinitely there. entertaining. Yeah. Where yeah. it looks like, every, the kangaroo, like, looks like the Old Spice guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's got the Terry Crews thing going. Yeah. He legit is, like, yeah. doing, all right. Anyways, uh, thank you so, so much. Guys, one more time. Round of applause for Madeline for being here. Thanks, everybody. The new apps are on Apple Download. TV. The Xbox app. One. Yes. Android, iOS. All over the place. The apps are out there to get them. New yes. seasons of any new shows. What are we watching? We're watching Ruby right now. Immersion's in full effect. They're going to be throwing a flaming basketball soon. That's crazy. Well, we've got to watch that. Lots of other cool stuff happening. Go watch stuff on Rooster Teeth now. I told Perfect. you. Do it. Guys, one last time, Adam. Thank you so Thanks. much.